People sometimes ask me if I became the Ron Van Dam Show announcer because I love what Ron does and I love his comedy. Well, no. It's because Ron broke me out of a Tijuana prison back in 82 and smuggled me across the border in a suitcase in the trunk of a Yugo. And I still owe him for that. Muchas gracias, mi amigo. You're listening to the Ron Van Dam Show on New England Broadcasting. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight, things can get a bit weird, if you like that sort of thing. Welcome to the program, it is the Ron Van Dam Show, I'm the one in the middle. (laughs) The middle of what? What are you talking about? The middle of what? Hey, thanks for stopping by. I'll try to make this worth your while. I'll do the best I can. How you doing? Your job is to relax and just get everything out of your head. I'll take it from here. I'll be your designated driver. You can drink all you want. I'm driving you home. you doing by the way i say this a thousand times a day i'm the only talk show host on the planet that actually cares about how you're doing because i ask you on every show at the beginning how are you doing and you never answer me if you do i can't hear you so what's the point but how you doing yeah me too i know it's all screwed up isn't it it's weird and we'll get through this together. At least I will. I don't know about you. Things are nuts these days. What the hell's going on? What the hell's going on? Why can't I be surrounded by good people? Do we not have enough of them? Do we have a shortage of good people? Can we make some? Thank you. Well, uh, welcome to the show. If you're not familiar with me, let's leave it that way. I've been doing this for 30 years. What I've been doing, I can't really describe, but I've been doing this radio morning thing for 30 freaking years. Your first response should be, what the hell's wrong with you? And your second should be, thank you for your service. Well, whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You don't even have to say it. I know. May I say, though, just between you and me, you're looking pretty good today. What'd you do, shower? Did you shower this morning? Oh, my God, you did. Look at you. Your skin is clean all of a sudden, and your hair isn't limp. Wow. That's amazing. How often do you shower? Once a month? Wow, that's impressive. I know. What's the point of showering? Who are we showering for? You know what it is, kids? And I call you a kid because I have, I don't know your name. Uh, You know what it is? We have to do things to pump ourselves up. You know, we don't dress for other people. We don't shower for any, we do it for ourselves. We do it for us, so you should do things for yourself. When you sit down and you, and you eat dinner, are you doing it for somebody else? No, you're doing it for yourself. You're freaking hungry. That's important stuff. Live with it. Go with it. <sighs> what was it? Martin Luther King, I believe, who said, it's dinner time. I think, it, did he, was that the famous thing that he said? I think it was. No, he said a lot of stuff, and uh, and I wish he were here because uh, we need you, babe. I'm telling you, man. Oh, man. Anyway, welcome to the show. I formally throw out the welcome mat to you. I don't have a welcome mat. I never, I've never had a welcome mat in my life. Who came up with that stupid thing? You take this mat and you you, you print the word welcome on it, and then you put in front of your front door, assuming that everybody comes to your front door is welcome. Guess what? Nobody is. 
They're not all welcome. Stop being so so flowery pansy-ish. <laughs> welcome. Some people have these elaborate signs just on the right hand or left hand side of their front door. It's a plaque and it's engraved and it says something stupid like uh, uh, all visitors are welcome here or our home is your home. Well, then leave the front door open. I mean, what are you talking about? Stop being so nice to people. You got to realize people have to earn your trust and in, in your friendship. This isn't a world of Facebook where you just happen across a person and then you give them all your vital information. That's what Facebook is, by the way. <laughs> this is how old I am. This is where I live. This is where I went to school. Here are all my relatives, their phone numbers, their addresses, their assets. Uh, here's everything about me. Here's here here are the results of my last colonoscopy. Uh, it's all on my uh, Facebook page. Uh, Facebook sucks, man. I every once in a while I'll do a show about how much Facebook sucks. I know you go to it and you have a page. You probably do, but in the back of your mind you're saying to yourself, "This sucks." Someone could have done this a lot better. <laughs> This is because it's really stupid. I'm reading things about people that I don't even know, and they're telling me what they had for dinner, and I'm supposed to sit there and and find myself fascinated by this? What are you doing? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's very strange. Then they call it a news feed. A news feed is... It's, it, it's an ego burst cesspool of crap is what it is. It's people getting themselves off, uh, assuming that you're interested in what they're saying. Oh, my God. Hey, here's, here's a clue for you. I'm not interested in your opinion. If I am, I'll ask for it. It's called conversation. Facebook, man, what the hell is that about? Wow. I'm friending people I don't even know. I don't want to get into it. It just it annoys me. The whole concept was crazy. I've I've told you this before. I don't know if you, you, you I mean, I don't know. Millennials don't know anything. I, I I try to educate them on this show. I have to explain everything to millennials because they weren't around when most of the stuff was happening. So I have to constantly explain to millennials. I have to stop and, and just say, oh, by the way, uh, this is what I'm talking about. I mean, <laughs> millennials, do you know how Facebook even began? Do do you? Uh, Steve Gutenberg, I think that's who it is. Uh, he he uh, he was in college, and in, in I think it was Massachusetts. I'm not even sure because I don't know what I'm talking about. But I, I pretty much well. This is your fact of the day, by the way. Ladies and gentlemen, please prepare yourselves. It is that time again for Ron's Fact of the Day. So Steve Gutenberg, uh, or something like that, I don't know who, what his name was, uh, he was uh, he was in college and he, he came up with this thing that uh, you can start grading uh, women uh, by how pretty they look and if you go to bed with them or buy them a soda, uh, two extremes obviously right there. Uh, but he would grade women on the way they looked, and, and all the guys would go, "Whoa, this is fun! Let's let's uh, let's do that." What a sexist, Trumpian thing to do! Uh, and this is how how Facebook got sparked. Uh, he would get databases uh, accordingly, and uh, it was uh, it was founded on a on a horribly sexist, stupid, moronic idea. And now it's turned into this, a social phenomenon that uh, is, just defies, uh, it, it, it pretty much uh, defined uh, losing your identity, uh, just losing your, your, your privacy. Did you ever send a picture of yourself, of your private parts to another person? I haven't. It never even crossed my mind. What would make me think that if I took a picture of my private parts and sent it to, to somebody, that the reaction would be, 
Oh my God, that's impressive. No, you know what the reaction is? Oh my God, that person's sick. You don't take pictures of your private parts and send them to people. You know what employers are doing, millennials? What they're doing is they're going to your Facebook page. Not easy, not, not hard to find, not, not easy not to find. That's a double negative. And they look you up and they see, like, what kind of an idiot you are. If you have stupid stuff on you, you know, anything you post is there forever. It never goes away. You'll have somebody from Nigeria scamming you in 10 minutes. You got to be careful. You don't just walk up to a stranger in the street and say, You want to be my friend? You want to be my friend? You don't walk up to straight. Do you do you do do that? You don't do that. Nobody does that. See somebody walking down. Excuse me. I don't know you. I I have no idea who you are. You could be an axe murderer. I really don't even know. Do you want to be my friend? Can you friend me? Oh, please accept my invitation to be my friend. Oh, please. I'll tell you all about me and all my personal information. I'll send you pictures of my private parts, too. We can instant message each other, or we can not, not so instantly do it. Uh, we, can, we, can, uh, we can have uh, Facebook things going on. Just you. I don't know you. I have no idea who. I just decided to walk up to you because uh, I need friends. I need friends. It's embarrassing, man. It's embarrassing what happened to society. It's embarrassing. It's, it's, it's incredibly embarrassing. God. When I was growing up, you know, people would say, Ron, how many friends do you have? I have like two like really good friends that I would trust with my, my kidney as long as they gave it back later. Um, I, I have, a, I'd say I have about 20 friends that, that I know that I, people that I like that I talk to every once in a while, they're really acquaintances, but we'll say 20. Now you say that to somebody, how many friends do you have on Facebook? I have 20. <gasps> you poor closet loser. That's pathetic. Why? How many friends do you have? 752. And that's kind of low. I'm a little low this week. 752 friends. Can you name them? Um, I can't even pronounce their names. 700. God, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Anyway, uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> I have a great guest uh, coming up on today's show. Yeah, I do. I do. I do. I do. You doing all right, man? You doing okay? Huh? Mm, I know. I know. What time do you start drinking? Mm-hmm. I know. Isn't that crazy? How it gets earlier and earlier and earlier. And I'm talking to the 10-year-olds. Isn't it crazy, man? <laughs> The only thing I've got scheduled for the day is when I have my first drink. And I don't really drink a lot. It's just, (sighs) we're self-medicating, ladies and gentlemen. We're self-medicating. The only good thing about this, and it is the only good thing in regards to drinking, when you go to a bar and you have a drink, it's at least 10 bucks, 10 to 12 bucks, depending on where in the country you happen to live can be 10 or 10, 12 or, or, or 18 bucks a drink. You have it at home, it's like pennies. It's like, well, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not 18 bucks a drink. And you don't have to tip yourself either. So I'm saving money alcoholically. And I'm not sure that that is a word or an adjective or anything like that. But um, alcoholically, uh, I am saving a lot of money. <laughs> and I don't have to drive home because guess what? That's where I am to begin with. I'm my own designated driver. I'm saving money on gas 
my luck, gas prices are extremely low, and I'm not driving. <laughs> well, that didn't work out, did it? All right, it's supply and demand. Eh, whatever, whatever you want to call it. That that didn't work out very well. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Pollution has been cut in some areas by 40%. Yeah, that's a number I just made up. But I know it's high. Yeah, air pollution down because there, there are not a lot of cars on the road. So there's not that much pollution. Factories have closed down, cut down on manufacturing, if they're even manufacturing anything. And that is also making the air cleaner. I mean, you know, it's horrible, but it's wonderful. I saw a commercial on television yesterday. It, it kind of made me laugh because it's this is all just so bizarrely crazy that it becomes a little funny at a point. Oddly enough, of course, unless you're sick or, or you have no money at all, that is not so funny. Um, so it's a commercial on television for, uh, it was the Charmin people, I believe it was the Charmin people, or some kind of really nice toilet paper company. And uh, there were the manufacturing lines and, and uh, uh, <laughs> these, these people in the factory, and they're, 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 they said, this is what they said in the commercial, we, we know that toilet paper is very important to you, and we're making it as fast as we can. We stepped up production because no one should be without toilet paper at our time of need. And, I, and I, I'm sorry, I just started laughing. I never thought I'd see anything like that, where uh, my, my savior uh, would be the production of, of toilet paper. And for a while, there, were, there was no toilet paper on the shelves at all. I mean, I was wiping my ass with my underpants, which I tend to do frequently anyway. Um, that's a joke. Don't judge me. That was a joke. Uh, so now they're they're publicly saying we're we're making uh, uh, as much toilet paper as and thank you and thank you for thank you for making toilet paper. I like what what the hell's going on? What the hell's going on here? And slowly but surely, and I don't know who Shirley is. I don't know anybody named Shirley, come to think of it. That's odd. I don't know anybody named Gloria either. What happened to those names? Millennials, they used to be names that they used to name people. I know they're not around anymore. You, you, you don't hear those names, uh, but they, the people used to be called that. Anyway, Gertrude. No one's called Gertrude anymore. Even Gertie, I, I don't. I've not. I've never known somebody with that name. Uh, anyway, <laughs> all right. This is getting out of hand. You're you're talking way too much today. <laughs> Phone conversations, man. I'm telling you, my only connection to human beings is phone conversations. Ugh, ugh. Ugh. Yucky, yucky. Anyway, um, my guest joins us uh, right after these commercial words. Thank you so much for hanging on, by the way. Um, usually, to listen to this show, it's uh, about two thousand dollars an episode, and that's uh, that's that's with the with the plan. Uh, two thousand dollars an episode. I'm going to waive that fee for you today. It'll just be thirty five dollar court costs. So, uh, you're welcome. You're very, very welcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Ron Van Dam Show is intended for mature audiences. Oh, so that's what ironic means. Yes, honey. Yes, it does.
Hannah Stevens joins us now. She's a wildlife uh, novelist and activist, and we're talking about protecting animals and nature on the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And uh, I understand that you have a new book. I do. Borneo Experience. Wow. And it takes place in Borneo, Malaysia. Yeah. Jeannie Williams, my protagonist, uh, former war correspondent, wildlife activist, is traveling there to report on the trafficking of baby ant- orangutans uh. Uh, by, by a cartel. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, boy, this never seems to end, uh, Hannah. I mean, <laughs> we have, we've been talking about this for decades and decades and decades. And uh, is, is the picture getting a little bit better? Well, I think people are more aware of what's happening. Mm-hmm. And the authorities in, in, in these countries are really trying to tamp this down. But it's very, very difficult to, to uh, you know, catch these guys. And uh, so Jeannie Williams uh, goes to these areas and she comes back and she writes about this. And, of course, the cartel doesn't want this information to get out, so they uh, try to uh, kidnap her. They kidnap her, and they they uh, almost kill her, and, you know, so bad things happen to her. Mm. But uh, she prevails, and uh, so, you know, these, these baby animals, uh, the orangutans live in the forest. That is their home. They have no other home, and the forests are being cut down for palm oil, uh, plantations, oh and uh, these trees are ancient. I mean, they're millions of years oh, old, yeah. and uh, palm oil is in practically everything that, I mean, many, many products that we use, shampoo, uh, ice cream, uh, you know, mm. you name it. Yeah. But there is a sustainable uh, palm oil uh, 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 product that uh, people can buy if they, you know, if they look at the labels. So, uh. Yeah, uh, I, I get frustrated frustrated about how stupid humanity is. Um, I, I do it on a daily basis, especially now. <laughs> and uh, it seems like you can't make progress unless you destroy what you had there already. And I don't understand that mentality that progress doesn't mean destroying what's there. It, it means coexisting and building upon. And I just, that's a great example, destroying forests for uh, for for their uh, assumed progress is just it's it's disheartening. No, you are so so right on, but of course the driving thing here is 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 money and greed. Yes, it always. I is. mean, yeah. Mm. So uh, that's that's the problem. Yeah. Uh, these this is a fourth in a series of books that I have written. I've traveled the world, and. Uh, mm. uh, then I come back and write these mystery series and <laughs> trying to raise awareness among people who might not be even be thinking about it. Yeah. And uh, I've been to Antarctica, the Arctic Circle, uh, New Zealand, and, and many faraway places. And then I come back and write about the plight of the wildlife on our planet. Yeah. Um. You know, it's it's weird when I see television commercials for uh, puppy dogs that are uh, abused and not taken care of and look emaciated. All of a sudden, the public goes go, goes crazy. I mean, they they go, "Oh my god!" And it's, it's the uprisings. And uh, I, 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 but it stops at puppies, unfortunately. That I mean, they're animals all over the world that that are being devastated. And I know that you try to bring it to, to light. I I just think if, if if some of our fellow human beings saw what's actually ha- happening face to face, it might change their minds. Not everybody's obviously, but there might be more pressure. Well, certainly that that is what I'm hoping for. Yeah. And uh, that's what we hope no. for. Yeah. <laughs> we do. But there's a lot of stupid people among us unfortunately well, it's it's ignorance it, yeah. it just is That's ignorance stupidity. and they're not aware and the and the problem the problem is is that people i don't think people understand that yeah. these this wildlife is integral to to our life on earth mm. and and once they're gone of course they're gone forever yes. and not only that but that will cause other problems on our planet and uh so it's it, it's just 
it's so important that we know about this. Yeah, but I mean, you 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 hit the nail on the head with with the greed and money. That's really the the evil involved. Uh, uh, f- they don't even think beyond their own purposes of of of, uh, of money and greed, and that's uh, that's behind a lot of things in our society. But with what we're talking about, yeah, that's the driving force. It seems that way. Yeah, yes. Well. It does. well if, uh, if people go to my website, hannahstevensauthor.com, they can see, uh, they can learn about me and about all of the books that I have written. Good. And uh, these books are available on Amazon.com and uh, Barnes and & Noble. And uh, so they, they can uh, yeah. have a good read. And not only that, but I teach. You know, they learn, you learn a lot about the history of the of the these places and about the people, about yeah. the indigenous people. You know, it's just a, and and there's murder and mayhem and all kinds of things happening. Yeah, which which you know, in a fictional piece, that's fun. In a real piece, it's not so much fun. Uh, I agree. Yeah, tell me a little, just for a second. Tell me a little bit about about yourself and how you got so involved in 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 this plight. Well. I, I took my first trip to uh, Botswana, and when I came home from Botswana, I wanted to write about it. I had already written two novels, mm-hmm. the political in nature. And uh, so I, uh, uh, the uh, Sabo, the uh, bull elephant, had been killed, and I thought, oh, this is what I want to write about. Mm-hmm. And so that book is about the poaching of, of the elephants in actually in Kenya, mm-hmm. And uh, how they rescue a baby elephant, and they take take that baby elephant to the David Sheldrick uh, Wildlife Preserve, and you know, and 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 that it, it's it's a it's a really uh, sweet story, but it, it's a sad story yeah. about what is happening. And elephants are thirty percent down in population, and uh, uh, you know, I don't. There's no end to it. So. Mm, it Okay. Well, unless we start uh, speaking up, we speak ab- up about other things quite obviously, as what's going on in the news now, we can also speak up about other things that, that uh, are also destructive. Uh, it's the Borneo Experience. And again, where do we go? Of, of course, it's available on Amazon and, and uh, uh, Barnes & Noble and all that. But uh, where do we go? Do you have a website as well? Yes, uh hannahstevensauthor.com okay. and then it will actually take you to uh, my travel website oh. and uh, to, and um, I'm also a press, breast cancer survivor oh, breast cancer website Good. so thank you yeah. <laughs> 10 years now Good. and uh, so it, it, you know, you, as I say you'll learn a lot about me and about my books and Good. well Hannah it's nice speaking to a good person and uh, thank you for being so, and a pleasure speaking to you. That'll do it for me today. Uh, there is a rebate on this show, by the way. If you send in uh, that coupon to your local deli, they will uh, give you $2 back for listening to this show. Just try that and see what happens. Yeah. Give it a shot. And, of course, include a photograph of your private parts. That's also important. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Have you washed your car lately? Uh, it's not that it's dirty. It's this freaking pollen. What the hell is with the pollen? Trees are giving it up too much. I love trees. I think trees are beautiful. I love to see them sway in the wind. This is not too much. The leaves rustling. It's a very calming, soothing thing to see. Um, but the pollen? Stop it. Stop it with your tree pollen. It's flying all over the place, and it's getting into my system. Yesterday, I had to take an allergy pill, um, you know, one of those over-the-counter things, under-the-counter, through-the-counter. I don't know what that's called. But I took an allergy pill because I was just uh, sneezing, and I thought, "Uh uh-oh, sneezing. Oh, that's right, it's allergies. Okay, I'm good. Uh, Yeah, I know you go through that, too. Uh, <laughs> I'm coughing. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, okay. It's allergies. Okay. Uh, yeah. Stop it with the pollen, man. Let's call it a day. When does the pollen stop flying around? It's crazy. I'm allergic to all that stuff. So are you. I know you are. 
I'm allergic to tree pollen. Uh, I'm allergic to uh, grass pollen. I'm allergic to people. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot. But I'm not allergic to nuts. Uh, yesterday on the show, I talked about people who are allergic to nuts. I'm not allergic to nuts. I'm allergic to people who act nuts, who are pretty much nuts, but not the nut itself. It's a specific uh, thing. <laughs> Hey, there are astronauts uh, from the United States on the uh, on the International Space Station. There, there's, there were there was uh, an American and two Russians. They're still there, and they were joined by two Americans who went up on a, a SpaceX uh, rocket ship to uh, to the International Space Station, which is which is fascinating. We're we're back. Uh, spending money on on space exploration that obviously um, we can't even take care of stuff here. <laughs> why are we Why are we going to the moon and to Mars and stuff when When uh, uh, hello, uh, did you look at where you live? Can you do some Can you do some repairs here first before you go looking for something else? It's not like in anybody's lifetime we're going to be going to Mars to a Holiday Inn. Come on, man. I've heard of social distancing, but that's insane. All right. uh, You have yourselves a wonderful day. This has been great. It really has. You are wonderful. Again, if I could put a gold star on your head, I would. Not because you've been great, but so you'd walk around in public and people would say, what does that person got a gold star in their head for? How bizarre. Oh, that's the Ron Van Dam show. Okay, 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 okay. Hey, make it a great day. I wish you peace. Tomorrow? Come back tomorrow? Cool. <laughs>